Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with confidence intervals uh, is going to con concentrate on the construction of a confidence interval for a single, for a single population, population, for a single population mean okay uh, I have actually got uh, a number of videos pr prior to this okay uh, where we've constructed a 90% confidence interval and a 95% confidence interval in this video we're going to concentrate on a 98% confidence interval but let's just keep in mind is that there's two formulas that we could choose from the first formula is dependent on whether we know the population mean or the population standard deviation or not so whether the population standard deviation okay, is known okay if it's known if we do know it the formula is based off a of a z distribution and the formula is that x bar minus z times the population standard deviation over n must be less than the population mean which must be less than x bar plus z of sigma over the square root of n this formula here we use okay it's important here okay we use this particular formula this variant of the formula okay when we know the population standard deviation. Okay? When we don't know the population standard deviation and, and when we're actually given information about the, the sample standard deviation, we have a different formula. So that's the next formula is the population, when the population standard deviation, standard deviation, deviation is unknown. Okay? And this is this is what's key here. When it's unknown, the formula is quite similar to this. Uh, well, we don't know the population standard deviation, but we do know the sample, so sigma becomes s. And also, because we're basing it off sample data, we actually rely upon a t distribution. So the formula is going to be x bar minus t times s over the square root of n must be less than mu, which must be less than x bar plus t uh, of s over the square root of n. And the only thing that changes, the only thing that changes is the t value. We know the x bars, the sample means, we know the sample standard deviation, and we know the sample size. The t value is what changes dependent on the size of the confidence interval that we want to construct. Okay? So we know that the, the t value is going to change. So it's actually straightforward to do. So let's have a look at this particular uh, this particular uh, uh, scenario okay it's the same scenario that I had before but the only thing that's changing is that it's a 98% confidence interval so we have a random sample of 65 recently qualified accountants showed they had an average starting salary of 55,000 euros okay the standard deviation of the sample was 15,000 euros and what we're being asked to do is to construct a 98% confidence interval for the average income of recently qualified accountants okay so just keep in mind that this is a sample of 65 individuals. It's a sample of 65 recently qualified accountants. So this is being taken from a population of recently qualified accountants. Now the population of recently qualified accountants does have its own average starting salary. But we don't know that because we haven't got access to the population. Okay? But what we do know is for the sample, it's average, it's average starting salary. The average starting salary for the sample is €55,000. We also know the standard deviation of the sample is 15,000. So what I like to do is to extract out all the information that's been provided. We have a sample of size 65, so we have n is equal to 65. We know the sample mean is 55,000 euros, so the sample mean is equal to 55,000 euros. We also know the sample standard deviation is 15,000, so s is equal to 15,000 euros. And the type of interval, the size of interval that we need to construct is a 98% confidence interval. So the CI, the confidence interval that we want to construct is 98%. Okay? Uh, so that's all of our information. You can see that we're being provided with S, the sample standard deviation, in which case we're going to choose this particular formula here to run. So the question is, what's the appropriate T value okay, that's associated with an interval of size 98%? So we need to calculate that. So we need to calculate the appropriate, the appropriate T value okay, that goes along with this 98% interval. Okay? So we need to calculate what is that? Let's just keep in mind that the t distribution, okay, the t distribution is a symmetrical distribution, okay, okay, it's centered on zero, okay, okay, and what we'd like is we'd like 98% of the area to be between between two two values, okay, and uh, we'll call this t1 and t2, okay. So the interval is going to is going to the 98% interval, okay, is an interval uh, that's symmetric, okay, uh, and there's a cutoff point on the left and a cutoff point on the right. But if there's 98% of the area between these two values, well, what we know then also is that the tail areas, okay, the right tail and the left tail must account for 
Well, it must account for the missing 2%, which means that 1% must be in the right tail and 1% must be in the left tail. Now we've got a set of t tables that allow us to figure out once we know the amount of cumulative area, once we know the amount of area in the right tail, we can figure out the appropriate t value that has that amount of area 